Good morning. Today is the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass this morning is being offered for Catholic Papa. This week's second collection will be for the Building Fund. A new ministry schedule for July and August is available on the website in one's email and copies are also in the sacristy. If you have not responded to Club Hill's email about lecturing, serving, and the Eucharistic minister, please do so as quickly as possible. Vacation Bible School will be held Monday through Wednesday, July 12th to the 14th. Please register your children now and donations are needed. This Thursday, there will be a holy hour with the priest and the deanery from 4 to 5 p.m. in the church with the evening prayer being prayed at 5 p.m. Please join the priests that serve you and pray for them. And it's not too late to make a donation to the 2021 because we are Catholic campaign. Please pray with me the prayer of St. Michael to the Archangel. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you and we not be afraid. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world, speaking in the most souls. Amen. Our entrance in is number 612. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Please rise and greet Father Bill. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those who have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, through our Son who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Hosea, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the in my graduate work in theology at Mount St. Mary's, it came time for us to study the letters of St. Paul. And one of my classmates and one of my closest friends at the seminary was a, a priest from the Diocese of Camden by the name of Louis Eldridge. And just if I could do a sidebar on Louis, remember Louis in your prayers today. Um, Louis was a great classmate, a great friend, and he made a great priest, but he had this burning desire that he wanted to be a missionary and he wanted to go to Marymount. And finally, after many years of pestering his bishop, he was given permission to go to Marino for a short period of time. And the last time I saw Louis was when he was boarding a plane to go to Korea. Unfortunately, shortly after Louis arrived in Korea, he contracted cancer and he passed. But a, a great, great priest, a great, great man. And sometimes all we hear about the bad things, you don't hear about the things that go on behind the scenes. But anyway, uh, Louis was brilliant. And uh, I really enjoyed studying with him and debating with him. And we had this professor for the letters of St. Paul. And this priest was working on his doctrine. And the first day of class, you know, you hand out the syllabus, the reading assignments, what's expected of us. And then he began handing out to us slips of paper with particular passages from the letters of St. Paul. And he said he wanted us to do extensive research and create papers from that particular passage of Scripture. It didn't take many of us long to find out that we were doing all the research for his research paper. <laughs> and this really bothered Louis. And lo and behold, the reason why I mentioned Louis today is because in the second reading that Ty read for us this morning was the particular scripture passage that Louis got. A thorn in the flesh was given to me. And the professor went and wanted Louis to answer the question, what was St. Paul's thorn in the flesh? That's debated. You know, it could have been an illness. It could have been an insecurity. It could have been a sense of unworthiness. It's been debated by theologians for hundreds of years. And this priest, I guess, wanted all these different thoughts on what this thorn is. Well, Louis beautifully crafted a 30-page paper on the thorn of the flesh. But he said St. Paul's thorn in the flesh was shingles. Now, I know shingles is a rather painful illness. But Louis managed, in his brilliance, to show how the problem of St. Paul was shingles. He didn't do what the professor wanted him to do. The 
professor did not get to hear what he wanted to hear. And yet he couldn't give Louis a bad grade because of the fact this is the baby. Way too many times you and I want to hear what we want to hear. Why don't we go to doctors? Because we're afraid of hearing bad news. Why are we afraid about being pulled over by cops? Speeding tickets, running stop signs. They never come up to us and say, Teresa, you did a great job driving today. <laughs> we do not like to hear what we don't want to hear. And so piles of people, they go off on all kinds of radical thoughts and they go to astrologers and palm readers and tarot card readers to hear things that they want to hear. That a mysterious man is going to enter into your life. That you will find wealth. And somehow this affects us. And we begin to believe, hey, this is wonderful. Our first reading and our third reading, the gospel for today, is about prophets. And somehow we have confused the word prophet with someone who we think predicts the future. But that's not a prophet. A prophet is one who reads the signs of the times and interprets how to live one's life in accordance with the gospel. And we're all called to be prophets. We're all called to be well-educated. We're all called to be people of faith. We're all called to be people knowledgeable about our faith. And when things like the pandemic hits, or a typhoon hits, or the hurricane is getting ready to hit Florida, or buildings collapse, it's not because God is mad at us and is trying to punish us. It's not God trying to tell us something. But the signs of the times are we need to be aware of how to be a Catholic Christian people. Look at the conduct of life down in Florida. What a tragedy. We would never ever think that an occupied building in the United States of America would collapse like that. And yet the building structurally was neglected for decades. And they knew it was neglected. So Catholic Christian, what does that mean? It means we have to be responsible and take care of our property and look out for the well-being of others. And we can come up with hundreds of other examples. In the gospel, Jesus goes home for a rest. And these people want to have all these great miracles and all these great stories that they've heard about Jesus that he's been doing outside of home. They want him to, you know, once again, change the water and the wine. They wanted to live in a lap of luxury. And Jesus doesn't do it. They become angry at them. At Jesus. Jesus did not do for them what they wanted to hear. And yet, we hear in the gospel today that Jesus was amazed at the lack of faith. Because they refused to believe because they thought that they were better, because they only wanted it their way. And yet Jesus could have performed any miracles back in Nazareth. 
We as a people today look for perfection. We don't like weakness. We find faults of others for being weak. Our current society looks at ways to put other people down and build ourselves up because we try and make them inferior to us. And St. Paul says he'd rather boast of his weakness. Whether his scorn in the flesh was some insecurity, some physical illness, or even shingles. St. Paul says, I use that weakness as a reminder me of the love of God in my life, of the grace of God that I need in my life. Because when I realize how weak I really am, then I am strong. Because I'm strong in Christ. So you ask, okay, Father Bill, I get the message. But how do I know I am listening to the signs of the times? How do I know that I am doing what God wants me to do? You have the answer to that too. That's why I'm spending time with the Lord. It's realizing that rather than looking at our watches and complaining how long is this homily going to go, or not even paying attention to the homily because it's more important for me to read the bulletin during this time because homilies are boring, or I wish you'd really hurry up because, you know, I have a golf tee off time. Why can't we give an hour to God on Sunday? Why can't we bring our joys, our hopes, our needs before the Lord? Why can't we focus in on it? Why can't we pick up a hymn and sing? Even if we have a bad voice, why can't we sing with gusto in the heart? You know what the word amen means? means I believe with my whole heart forever and ever Amen Do we believe the Lord who died and rose to save us with our whole heart? Do we take the opportunity to receive the sacrament of reconciliation by going to confession? <laughs> Not just once a year, but on a regular basis Nobody's perfect Go to confession at least once a month. Father, what can you do wrong? Let me tell you. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, we schedule times for Eucharistic adoration here at the Holy Cross. And yet few, so few people come out. We need to take time and we need to sit. And we need to say, Lord, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to pray for. But here I am. Speak to me. And in the quietness of your heart, the Lord will speak to you. And he will tell you what he wants you to hear. And he'll be proud of you. Because he will find you strong in faith. Some people might say, why are you wasting time on the church? Why believe in God? Why pray? St. Paul says it's best. When I am weak, then I am strong, because the power of Christ dwells in me. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten God made, consubstantial with the Father, Thank you.
Jesus was rejected by his own people. In faith, we accept him as our Lord and Savior, and we pray in his name. For Bishop Schler and his prophetic ministry of teaching the Catholic faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who serve society in police and fire forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the elderly and those with disabilities who find Christ's power in their weakness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For deeper devotion to Mary in our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, Especially Patrick and Corbin, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. In your goodness, Father, hear the petitions of your believing people, through Christ your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our name is number 695. Open my eyes. Hymn number 695.
glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with your Son in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once were the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most holy, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave me thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
teachingly dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other sign of peace.
the prayer to end the coronavirus. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask that you guard and protect us from the coronavirus 2019 and, and all the spirits For all that I have and I receive, for those that are coming now, we can For those searching for a remedy in the for medical care for the sick, Thank you. 